Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Yakima Holdup 2 bike platform rack here on the back of our 2020 Tesla Model Y. Now guys, this can be a nice way of getting your bikes to your destination. Uh, now personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the Holdup. I definitely think it serves its purpose quite well. It is going to get your bikes to your destination. However, it is just a little bit more on the, uh, I want to say flimsy. Flimsy, not right, like the right word. But you can see how these arms just move a little bit more. Now, you're still going to have your bike nice and protected here. I'm just not the biggest fan of how mo much movement I'm seeing with this bike. And especially if you do have this on the road, you're definitely going to see a lot more bounce. Um, right out of the gate, one thing that I think sits perfectly where this guy does is going to be the Rocky Mountain Monorail 2 bike platform rack. Um, personally, the Rocky Mountain just has a little bit better hold on it. Now, Yakima does make great quality products out there. I just don't think the holdup's quite like one. Now, I do know other people that have these guys, and they swear by them. They love them. They've had it in their family for a long time, and they keep utilizing it. Uh, personally, just not my favorite choice, but you still do have a decent little bike rack here for yourselves. Now, what we mean by that, you are getting a front tire hold here to go ahead and secure your bike. That is a huge little feature, as it is going to allow you to carry your carbon frame bikes with no issue. Since we don't have any frame contact, we're not going to have it warp, we're not going to have it deteriorate, and therefore it's going to be A-OK -okay on this guy. And with a 60-pound rating per bike, we're going to have no trouble even getting those heavy, big e-bikes up on here, which is going to be awesome for ourselves. So I do like the capacity rating for it. Um, and this ratcheting arm system, the only thing that bugs me a little bit is that clacking of the noise. So if that's something that aggravates you a little bit too, might be a deal breaker. Not the end of the world though, of course. On each little arm here too, you are seeing a locking cord or a cable lock. And all we gotta do, run that through our frame right back onto itself. And therefore our bikes can be nice and secured. People won't be able to mess with us or take our bikes, which is awesome for ourselves. And I will say, I really do like these front tire holds. They do a great job of situating your bike in it. Now keep in mind, you are gonna be limited, of course, of what you can fit in there. You got about under three and a half inches there, about three and a quarter for that max width. So keep in mind, not gonna be the best uh, carrier for getting your fat tire bikes. In fact, not a lot of carriers out there are. One thing about those Rocky mounts though too, they actually do have a lot of fat tire bike adapters normally included in a lot of them. I'm not too sure about the monorail too. Uh, I would definitely check that product page, but they do have some easy adapters to go ahead and change out for their straps. Um, I'm sure Yakima does too. And these straps are actually quite long here. You guys can see, you actually get quite a decent amount of space in here. Now, nothing too crazy. Again, probably not gonna be great for your fat bike tires, but I do like that 18C standard groove in there. We're gonna have no trouble hanging our bike on here, and this does oscillate a little bit too, which can be nice for your varying sizes of bike needs. Again, too, that front cradle does a great job of acting kind of a wheel chalk, and just gives you a nice little base to actually put that front wheel in, which becomes great. And this rationing arm just works by simply sliding down, won't be popping up unless we use that red lever. And one thing I do like about the uh, Yakima Holdup, you do have those red points of contact, letting you know where you can go to actually start manipulating your rack and getting it moved. We'll talk about manipulating our rack and getting it moved. One thing that's pretty cool about the Tesla, you have a decent amount of hatch space right there, right? A lot of cargo we wanna access. However, as it stands right now, we definitely would be having a little bit of interaction with our handlebars and that hatch. So I can go ahead and actually tilt this guy away. To do so, we're just coming right up to this little guy right here. You're going to have this little plastic lever you want to go ahead and get out of the way. You're going to pull that guy by supporting your mask down here. You can just let it sink right there. And now I can come over, pop open my hatch. That's going to allow me to grab my bike helmets, my coolers. I think we would actually have a little bit of interaction there if I didn't move that bike. So one thing you have to watch out for, that's kind of the small advantage of this being a little wobbly. You can go ahead and pull that out of the way. Now that's not putting any pressure on that system. As you guys kind of see, it is kind of just doing that innately. Now though, I can go ahead, grab those coolers, those helmets, anything I might need. And one thing you can do is use this as kind of a nice little, nice little spot to go ahead and change your shoes or whatever you might need. Also can be nice just to go ahead and hang out. Now with any kind of platform or tray style, it does take up a little bit more room on the sides. If you're wanting a nice little hang out spot uh, you could look at a hanging style rack however then you can't have your bikes hanging on your platform or I'm sorry on your bike rack as you take it off and on so that's kind of the disadvantage of those guys um, but yeah so let's go ahead and close this I am gonna again I think we'd have just a slight little issue there if I wasn't pulling on that just uh, for a hair there as you guys saw so if you have very long handlebars, that might be something to look out for. Uh, we've tried a couple other platform styles out here today. That's kind of been the first time we've had an interaction with the tilt away being even close. Um, so it's definitely something I'd kind of watch out for with the holdup as well. 
from the very end to you are seeing just a little bottle opener, which can be great to enjoy your favorite beverage of choice at that trailhead. Well, guys, we can go ahead and pop off this bike. It's not going to take me too much longer to do so. I'm just going to press in on that lever. That's going to allow me to take out my strips, of course, get those set behind me. That does bring me to my last point of contact. I'm gonna make sure I'm holding onto my bike. I don't want that tilting into our vehicle or ourselves to cause any damage. I can hold onto this lever right here, pressing it up, out to the side, and then lifting my bike up. We can go ahead and get it out of there and get ready for our ride. Now mounting it becomes pretty much the same thing, but in reverse, of course. But when you are mounting it, nice that this strip goes ahead and kind of sticks up out of the way, as you guys can imagine. Just simply loop your wheel right in there, and it'll go ahead and cinch down in no time. Well, I'm going to go ahead and condense this for ourselves here. And that's one thing I do like about the holdup as well. You get that front arm cradle kind of going in the inside. It can really start condensing a lot of the space that you guys can actually see that it's actually being used on here, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing I will say, um, I would probably go ahead and snag this guy underneath your cradles. You can do so by taking your lever and just putting it underneath that cradle like so. That becomes nice because it won't be moving at all in that position. Now I will say, as you guys were hearing those clacks earlier, they do a great job of giving you some resistance. So it takes quite a lot to get it up there. As you guys can see, it does want to go down right away. So I like using those cradles sometimes, whether in this position or behind it. Therefore, when we actually go to fold this up, we're not going to have it interacting with our vehicle. Well, talking about dimensions and the space we're working with, the big ones we're going to look out for right out of the gate is gonna be our clearance issue here. So, or issue as all carriers are gonna have. We're just looking for our clearance here from the end of our rack to the ground here. So from the ground to the very end of our carrier puts us right under 19 inches or so. And that way we can actually go ahead um, and keep that in mind as we are watching our clearance. Another good thing to watch out for is going to be the length that we're adding to our vehicle. Sorry there, guys. I was uh, wondering what we're messing with over here. But we definitely want to keep in mind how much length we're adding into our vehicle. So let's go ahead and look at that together here. From the rear of our bumper to the very end is going to be putting us, looks to be right at 27 and a half inches there for the end of our arm. Now, that's not going to be adding actually too much room. Under 30 inches is great for a two-bike platform rack, in my opinion. But we can go ahead and see how we can shorten that down. We do have this little lever right here again. And instead of tilting down, we're going to tilt it up into position here. Of course, get that plastic spacer out of the way. You can walk it up. It'll click back, click back into position. And here you're going to hear a little bit of movement. Um, here again, too, not the biggest fan of that squeaking. A little bit of grease, a little bit of lubrication go a long way in eliminating that for yourself. Um, but in this position, you might feel this a little bit, especially on starts and stops. Um, you might have a little bit of road shake. And again, that's why I would highly recommend getting these guys tucked underneath your cradles. Therefore, you're not going to have any issue with it actually interacting with that vehicle. Again, though, that clackiness usually prevents them from going too much as you do have to get over the spokes inside the gears here. So hopefully, even if you don't have them tucked underneath the cradle, you'll never see it interacting with the back of your Tesla, which is great. But we have gone ahead and shaved down a lot of that space for ourselves. So from the back of the bumper now to the very end, that is going to be putting us right about let me get that really quick for you guys here. About eight and a half inches there. Sorry for myself there, guys. Was trying to get that actual edge for you there. So definitely not too much room being added, which is great. Gonna have no trouble pulling this in the garage, or at the very least, get a ton more maneuverability to get this parked wherever we might be. Moving our way down to the inside here, you can see we are working on a two inch shank here today. That's allowing us to be utilized by our two inch hitch receiver. On the inside, you are gonna have an inch of or a one one inch threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. Now these guys are awesome. They are standard across the industry, but you did love to see them still as this. As I give this guy a shake, it's going to be bringing this all in line to one system. As you guys can see, it's actually moving with the Tesla, which is great. That means we're not going to have any road shake, no play, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bikes, and our bike rack, which is great to see. Again, the holdup can be a decent little thing. And of course, you do have a little locking core there that's gonna be key to like to your locking core that's actually on your bike rack. One last little cool thing about the Yakima system though, if you do have any other Yakima accessories, you could start getting them key to like to your locking cores you have on this guy, utilizing Yakima's same key system. If you're like me and you need a few keys, a few spares, they can go a long way. And you actually can get them accessorized with all of your accessories. So, might be harder here on the Tesla. You might have to get the right fit kit for this 
Giacomo bars. However, if you do have anything else in the family as well, they become really easy to go ahead and get them all keyed alike. Again, the holdup is going to be a decent little bike rack, guys. It's been on the market for a while. People do use it. I know people that swear by it. Not the biggest fan, in my opinion. I think there's some better bike racks out there. Personally, I would look at the Rocky Mounts Monorail 2. It just seems to be a more solid product. It just seems to get my bikes there in a more stable manner. And also, I just kind of like the look of it a little bit more. But maybe that's because I like blue more than red. So I'll leave that, guys, up to you. That decision up to you. Well, guys, I think that about does it for our look here today at the Yakima Holdup 2 Bike Platform Rack here on the back of our 2020 Tesla Model Y. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.